Hey, hello, hello, hello. Let's do it again. Hey, this is Butch Walker of Butch Walker and the Let's Go Out Tonight. I grew up with two older sisters who I was victimized by their album collections, and their album collections were so different. Like, you know, one one of them would have a a Blondie record, and the other one would have a, a Kiss record. When you come from a small town that's pretty boring, uh, you, you don't really... Pass judgment. You're not a critic. You're a 14 year old kid who is just dying to hear something new and stare at an album cover all day because it looks cool. One thing I always try to do is try to always be, you know, somewhat storytelling and uh, a little bit poetic so that you can tie that into whatever song it is. I don't want to make the same record every day. I don't want to wear the same shoes every day. (laughs) I've got this song. Beth Amphetamine, it's basically about this girl named Beth who epitomizes every club girl that I end up getting stuck with at the end of the night, getting my ear talked off till 7 in the morning, who's the drama queen, who's throwing beer bottles at somebody and I'm having to break up a fight from and she's going to the bathroom every five minutes to do drugs and there's, you know, it's just like, it, it, it epitomizes my reasons for not going out. beacon in a, a flashing beacon in an ocean of craziness la 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 Avril Lavigne who plays in the video who got my record and loved it and thought that song was amazing and she called me up one day and said I want to be in that video if you ever do a video for that song and I was like well okay put on a put on a black wig then you know so it just so it doesn't look like I'm sticking Avril Lavigne in my video to score points with the kids you know the core of the band uh, did the record together live in the studio Uh, they contributed a lot to shaping the sound of it as opposed to me going in like I've done on on previous records and just did everything myself which is different for me but I liked it not, not, not the control freak that I used to be. I didn't get into producing uh, because I thought it would ever make me any money or be a lucrative thing for me. I just did it because I didn't have the money growing up to pay for a producer to do my record. And I would take the 200 bucks that I made and save from the, the one record that I would make for somebody for nothing and buy an 8-track and then a 16-track. And I worked my way up and just spent all my money on, you know, on, uh, on gear and I ended up just getting I think I just got better and better at it at learning how to produce records and learning what not to do if I record someone else if I'm producing another person's record I, I want it to be whatever they want it to be if they want to record with the lights out and have you know goat heads everywhere that's fine with me I don't really care I can work under whatever conditions I think it's always easier to do your own records because you know what you want and if you know how to do it You've just knocked out the middleman. The audience to me is like my family. It's like my little misfit family of of, of uh, friends in every town when I go there. So when I play like a, a place that holds 500 people or 1,000 people, you can sit there and have that intimacy with them. But when you go play a festival like we just did in London, to, and there's you know 100,000 people there, you don't hear anything but, you know, It's very much uh, an impersonal experience, but it's pretty awesome, too. So I'll take them both. American audiences are amazing, and my fans in in America are are diehard. But uh, the UK, after just going there and playing, they're so responsive and so um, respectful. Japan, the same. It's almost militant. You know, it's like, like, oh, my God, oh, my God, this is great, this is great, it's great. And right when you open your mouth to say something, they go... And they don't say a word, and they listen to everything you say, and it gets dead quiet. There'll be like a thousand people completely quiet, and you won't hear a thing. And you'll kick it in the next song. It's very organized chaos, and I I think that that's kind of fun and kind of cool to to experience. There is this thing called post-tour depression that everyone gets when they come off the road, and it usually means a lot of drinking involved. But me, I tried to translate it to, I'm going to go in the studio and see if I can help other people achieve their goals and make something happen for them.